Beans have been an important part of the human diet for thousands of years. It's been said that the Egyptians had temples dedicated to them, worshipping them as a symbol of life. Even cowboys back in the gold rush days harvested them, much like we do today. People wondered why plants without additional ammonia would die while legumes would flourish. Chemists now know that legumes produce nitrogen in the soil, but why and how? To find out, we must look at the chemical communications between legumes and bacteria. know me as the type of guy who likes to carry beans around in his backpack. Now, I know that may sound a bit weird, but the truth of the matter is, beans, or legumes, as we like to call them in the scientific world, are incredible. They totally fascinate me because they are everywhere, in Africa, in Asia, and in China, even in my own backyard. Now, don't worry. I know what you are thinking. How does this have to do with chemistry? Well, let me tell you. It is all about how the legumes interact with the bacteria in the soil. Legumes send a chemical signal to bacteria. These bacteria are called rhizobia. They react to the first signal by turning on genes, which make proteins. These proteins are enzymes, also known as catalysts. They send a different signal back to the legume. This second signal causes the plant to make a nodule. Dr. Josie Shoalwater will explain. Hello oh, there! What are nodules? Nodules are growths on plant roots that are infected with bacteria. This bacteria allows for nitrogen fixation. Amazing! Anywho, the first signal sent from the legumes to the bacteria in the soil are called flavonoids. Flavonoids are complex molecules with hydroxyl groups attached to phenol rings. This unique molecule resembles the same molecule in red wine, known as anthocyanin pigment. If you were to make ink perhaps, this molecule might be included in your recipe. Then the bacteria sends other signals called knot factors. Knot factors are hydrolipid chains and a sulfate ion attached to a sugar. Via knot factor, plant cells divide. Newly divided root cells begin formation of the root's nodules. You know what? Let's take a look at these nodules. Come on! It's amazing! Well, I'm just going to dig up this pea plant because it's a legume. Let's see if there's anything interesting, like nodules, which I'm so excited to see. Well, there's a lot of dirt here. I can't really see anything. There. Well, let's go wash it. Yeah, now we can see the nodules right here. They're pink, and they're very small. It's amazing. But how did we find this flavonoid? the chemical signal sent between the legume and the bacteria. It's so small, so unique, so incredible. Well, my good friend and colleague, Dr. Sharon Long, will explain. Dr. Sharon Long is a professor at Stanford University in Palo Alto, California. She specifically studies biochemistry. When we first isolated it, um, we were able to purify it on chromatography and then we used several different um, mechanisms to um, study uh, what its structure might be. We used ultraviolet spectroscopy. We used um, NMR, nuclear magnetic resonance, and we used mass spec and we were able to identify the molecule as a flavonoid called luteolin. Here's the story. Dr. Sharon Long 
mentions three different techniques to find the flavonoid molecule. All involve spectroscopy. As many of you have probably learned in your chemistry classes, spectroscopy is the study of light and matter. Now the first type she used, UV spectroscopy, is used to quantify protein and DNA concentrations as well as the ratio of protein to DNA in solution. The second, which was NMR or nuclear magnetic resonance, analyzes these atomic nuclei to determine the presence of molecules in organic compounds. And finally, mass spectroscopy. Well, this is how you find the mass to charge ratio of ions. It's simple. Now, back to Dr. Sherrod Long. Responsible for that activity in the bacterium. Now, the chemistry that I've used uh, to look at this chemical and the subsequent molecule I'll tell you about exploit some of the developments in chromatography. Now, chromatography involves partitioning of different chemicals which either have, which have a greater affinity for one um, place than another, or for one solvent than another, or in this case, um, I used a method called uh, reverse phase chromatography, in which hydrophobic compounds will stick to beads and all of the charged and polar compounds will not stick to them. And then, by making a column of these hydrophobic beads, I'm able to uh, start washing molecules off with uh, water, and then water with 1% alcohol, and then water with 2% alcohol, and so forth. And every fraction that I got off, I would distill, purify, and then I would ask the question, does that fraction that comes off with 1% alcohol, does that have any activity on the bacterium? Nope. 2% alcohol? Nope. 10, 25, 30, 50, 60, 70. I tested all of the bacterium, which I've plotted in blue. Only when you get to 95% methanol and just 5% water does something come out that the bacterium wants to respond to. So what does that suggest to us? That suggests that the molecule that the bacterium uses as a signal is a fairly hydrophobic molecule. Maybe not completely, though, because you notice it wasn't 100% methanol to get it off. And in fact, there's some things that stick so tight, you can't get them off with methanol. You have to use xylene or you know, acetone and things like that. It came off when there was almost all methanol but a little bit of water. So that also suggested that whatever it was, was going to um, interact with water to some extent. So Dr. Josie Shulwater. Currently at UC Davis, researchers are using laser beams to further no their knowledge about this topic. Hopefully in the near future, like in five years. Scientists will be able to apply this information that they just learned to other plants, not legumes. And hopefully we won't be able we will be able not to use as much fossil fuels in making fertilizer. To review, legumes are a unique plant that fix their own nitrogen using chemical signals sent between the legume and the rhizobium bacteria in the soil. The first signal is called the flavonoid, while the second one is called the nod factor. These signals were discovered by Dr. Sharon Long by using spectroscopy and reverse chromatography. Hopefully, with this new knowledge, we will be able to apply this process to other plants, helping us conserve fossil fuels in our environment. I hope you have enjoyed this video as much as I have. And remember, the next time you eat a can of beans, and you have a little flatulence? Don't worry! Just think about the chemistry and everything will be good! <laughs>